Ever since Sukuna ate Tengen, he has gained two new power-ups that are just not letting him die, and the only person that can actually stop Sukuna right now and actually kill him isn't Yuji, but it's actually Maki. She is the key since she is the only person who can actually counter these power-ups since she is free from cursed energy. And all of this ties specifically to destiny, immortality, and of course Sukuna's curse of being the strongest. Be sure to leave a like, it helps out a lot, thank you. And of course, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for a ton of consistent and quality JJK content. Less than 10% of people who actually watch my channel are subscribed, so if you love JJK, I promise you, you won't regret it. And of course, thank you to these special members of the channel. It is always much appreciated. Let's get right into this. So the first thing we actually have to cover is Destiny being a thing in Jujutsu Kaisen. And I'll give you a quick refresher in case some of you may have forgotten what it is. I, the Star Plasma Vessel, and the Six Eyes are all connected by fate. In the past, Kenjaku has twice lost the Sorcerers of the Six Eyes. The second time, he took no chances and killed the Star Plasma Vessel and the Six Eyes less than one month before they were even born. Nonetheless, on the day of the merging, the Six Eyes Star Plasma Vessel appeared. After that, Kenjaku switched to see instead of eradicating the six eyes and began searching for the prison realm because two bearers of the six eyes cannot appear at the same time. So in Jujutsu Kaisen there exists something called fate and destiny and it seems like certain characters have a stronger fate and destiny compared to other ones so much so that it can even affect the causality of the series and the universe will forcibly create a scenario such as there being another six eyes user and another star plasma vessel to actually force the merger of the star plasma vessel and Tengen. And of course with Tengen themselves being tied to destiny and they also have a very strong destiny. But here's when it gets interesting. Tengen proceeds to say, But then the unexpected happened 11 years ago when Toji Zenin intervened. He was physically gifted through heavenly restriction and on top of that, he was an anomaly who had escaped from cursed energy. As a human being who had escaped fate through the power of restriction, he destroyed our destinies. Then came along a boy with cursed spirit manipulation. So something very important to note, it seems like destiny is actually tied or even works through cursed energy. So someone like Maki who has no cursed energy is completely free of destiny and fate. And of course, this goes double for Toji who actually broke that destiny. Destiny. Now here's something that's very interesting. It seems like certain characters have a stronger destiny than others. And of course, this always being a Star Plasma Vessel, this being a Six Eyes user, and Tengen themselves. And spoiler warning for Mushoku Tensei if you want to avoid it, go to this time code on the screen. But this really does remind me of Mushoku Tensei, how Dragon God Orsted actually explains to Rudius how certain people have such a strong destiny that not even the Man God can actually intervene with them. This of course being characters like Roxy, Rudius, where no matter what, they were just destined to meet even when the Man God actually tried to separate them on several occasions, he was actually successful at first not letting them meet, but eventually they were just destined to meet. And he can't even kill them because their destinies are so strong. Though of course when Roxy was actually pregnant with Lara her destiny was weakened, so he's actually able to kill Roxy in that alternate future, but that's kind of what this all reminds me of. We kind of have this character right now, Maki, who is the only character who actually lies outside of destiny as the only one who is actually able to challenge people with stronger destinies because those who have a strong destiny are actually harder to beat, obviously because destiny doesn't want you to beat them. I mean, even when Kenjaku actually killed the Six Eyes user back in the past, the Six Eyes itself still did come back. Which does actually throw in the possibility that someone very recently, it could even be someone in the main cast, may actually get the Six Eyes because of destiny, because it's destined that a Six Eyes user has to intervene or stop Sukuna for another reason which I'll explain soon. But that's what's important to know, is that Maki, no matter how strong someone's destiny is, Maki is someone that can actually stop them and beat them. Now what about Sukuna's destiny? It does seem like Sukuna has quite a strong destiny. For what reason? We don't know. I mean, he's transcended through a thousand years and he has lived through so many battles and he has even to the point of people calling it Aspel survived so much that it's pretty clear that his destiny is remarkable. And one quick thing I'll touch on, it was actually said that he destroyed our destinies, that's what Tengen said when Toji actually shattered it, but I do believe that destiny, at least in theory, should at least reform or try to correct itself or even create a new path and that's not something that's confirmed, that's just a theory of my own because the world shouldn't be able to exist without destiny since destiny is directly tied to cursed energy so probably once Toji actually destroyed destroyed that destiny, the universe either created a new destiny or is trying to correct itself in some alternate way. But considering the fact that Toji completely broke it, I'd like to imagine that there's actually a completely brand new destiny that's currently being formed right now and it's what we're witnessing in the current day and age. But remember, Tengen actually has a very powerful destiny themselves. And Sukuna ate Tengen. This is kind of what I want to touch upon now. Now that Sukuna has actually eaten Tengen and Tengen is a part of Sukuna right now, shouldn't that actually mean that Sukuna's destiny is insanely powerful? I mean, not just the fact that it is already very powerful to begin with, at least in theory, you don't actually know how strong his destiny was. But now that he's eaten Tengen on top of that, that actually might explain how Sukuna's, and I'm gonna say this in quotes, has such an Aspel sort of run right now where he's just surviving everything. And I'm not saying that it's all Aspels, I'm just saying that's what a lot of people are calling it, which is why I'm saying it in quotes. That's what the fan base is accusing Sukuna and Gege right now. But that could be explained if we could just say Sukuna has such a powerful destiny, especially after eating Tengen, that no matter what, the universe just isn't going to let him 
lose. And that's why I think maybe Maki is the key here. She is someone who lies outside of destiny and someone that can actually shatter any new destiny that is formed to actually protect Sukuna and not have him die because of course she has no cursed energy just like Toji Zeni. This does also tie into a scarier possibility which is that maybe Sukuna could be an immortal since he did eat Tengen and may have the immortality curse technique now. It's just a possibility that I want to throw out there but if it is true it's a bit terrifying. Although it's not even clear if Tengen's immortality is something that's more so just aging and he basically has an eternal life or if he's someone that's actually unkillable because it does seem like his curse technique is something that just doesn't allow him to die of natural causes. Though again that is something that's unconfirmed as of now. But since Sukuna actually ate the curse technique of immortality he may be able to twist it in his own way or even reshape it using the black box and use that immortality to effectively make himself truly immortal. That is one insane possibility which I hope doesn't happen because it's too broken but maybe that is something that could happen and the only way to actually beat Sukuna in this scenario is to actually go with the soul plan and rip his soul out of Megami and that seems like it's the only way to beat him anyway because he's just such an unstoppable beast right now cannot lose via any normal means. But this also makes me wonder how strong is Yuji's destiny because this is someone who keeps dying and keeps coming back and even in the craziest scenarios where so many characters would have been long dead in his situation I mean to say this guy has plot armor is a complete understatement because he has come back from fatal injury after fatal injury after dying so many times and coming back which of course it makes sense since he's the MC but what if Yuji is someone who has such a powerful destiny that he is someone that also can't die or maybe he's actually someone who's destined to actually defeat Sukuna perhaps because of the connection that they had during the Heian era you know maybe he's a reincarnation maybe they were twins back in the day there's so much that goes into it and so much that we still don't know and hopefully we at least get to find out at some point in the series but that is something that's pretty cool I do like the idea that Yuji's destiny is actually intrinsically tied to Sukuna it just gives yet another reason that these two are destined to not only fight but potentially Yuji being the person that actually beats Sukuna but again Maki is someone who can fill that role because she is someone who lies outside of destiny and this could be a key factor as in Maki is someone who could be the tipping point in the scale of destiny if Yuji and Sukuna were to actually fight once again because let's say Yuji and Sukuna have such strong destinies that they actually basically cancel each other out or even Sukuna may have a stronger destiny than Yuji's because he's eaten Tengen right now. Maki could be that kind of anomaly or random joker that's thrown on the board. That could be the one to finally put an end to Sukuna. Maybe not directly but her actions, everything that she does from this point on should be affecting destiny as of now. That's assuming that destiny and fate are still here because Gege he's a fantastic author. He's, seriously he's great but one issue that I do have with him is that he tends to leave a lot of plot threads unfinished and open-ended and many of them that just lead nowhere or are never brought up again. Such as Nobita it being unclear if she's alive or dead. I mean if you wanted to kill her just say she's dead. Don't make this whole oh she's not dead there's a chance she's alive and it being so vague if she's dead or not. Or let's say with Toto as well since where is he? Or even Yuki and especially Kenjaku right now who you know plot threads that this guy had left that was just cut short. It's pretty incredible to be honest and it does make me worry that they may have actually completely forgotten that he even included destiny and fate in JJK but here's hoping that he didn't and it actually is an important thing because Toji breaking destiny and fate was actually the thing that set JJK upon the course that it's gone right now so the fact that we have another person who can break destiny and fate and Tengen was eaten by Sukuna and they both seem to have incredibly powerful fates at least Tengen does who Sukuna actually ate I do hope this insane lore drop that was dropped in chapter 145 is not just forgotten and never talked about again since this is a pretty insane concept to actually exist in JJK but let me know what you guys think if you enjoyed the video be sure to leave a like it helps out a ton thank you and of course if you haven't already be sure to subscribe for a ton of consistent and quality JJK content just like this like I said in the beginning less than 10% of people who actually watch my videos are subscribed so if you love JJK I promise you you won't regret subscribing and of course thank you to all the channel members as well it is always much appreciated but that's all from me have a great day and take care everyone